Hey everybody, welcome to Go Bold. My name is Jody Atariwala and I'm your host. And today I'm joined by Lieutenant Commander Tyler Smith, who is the commanding officer of HMCS Edmonton, a maritime coastal defense vessel of the Royal Canadian Navy. Um, Commander, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. So here we are on a very wet day at Canadian Forces Base Esquimalt, but uh, you're setting, uh, you're heading, preparing to head out uh, for a deployment. Uh, tell me a little bit about it. So uh, we're uh, we're about to depart on uh, Operation Carib. It's a uh, it's the count Canadian contribution to uh, a U.S. led um, counter narcotics uh, operation. It's to deter and disrupt transnational criminal organizations. Uh, so we're working with a, a U.S. led uh, uh, organization called Giant South, um, uh, which has an, a number of partner nations. Uh, it's it's our job to um, uh, to contribute to surveillance and monitoring of illicit traffic. Um, and Jai of South also supports uh, interdiction where necessary. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about HMCS Edmonton. Uh, you know, how many people on board this ship and what have you guys done to prepare for this deployment? Uh, we have uh, 48 personnel on board. Uh, some of those personnel are going to be U.S. Coast Guard law enforcement personnel. Um, so we've been training uh, very hard for the last, uh, last year, um, conducting other tasks. Uh, as we go, um, culminating in, in a, actually a, a, an exercise with the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy last week, um, uh, in which we, we went through some uh, tactics and procedures, uh, and uh, especially communications. It's always uh, it's always a challenge to um, to communicate uh, uh, with uh, with our allies and partners. So that's a that's a piece of the puzzle that's really important to work on. Um, so uh, so we've got all that uh, tightened up and. Uh, um, and we're uh, we're ready to, to go down there and uh, and, and support this uh, this very important international uh, operation. Awesome. And so, when you go down, are you going to be working as a uh, you're going to be working with your colleagues in, in the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Law Enforcement? Uh, but will you be operating as a single ship, or will you be operating with other ships? Uh, we'll be operating uh, mostly independently, though. Uh, you know, there may be other uh, ships from other nations down there at the same time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so. Now, uh, when you go down, you're going to be in, I guess, um, well, it says off Caribbean. So, if I don't, are you going into the Caribbean or are you going to be staying on the Pacific side? We'll be staying in the Eastern Pacific. Okay. Yeah, the, um, um, it's, it's called off Caribbean. That is the, uh, uh, the, the blanket name for the operation that covers the entire area. But uh, this will be the Eastern Pacific for, uh, for us this year. Okay, awesome. And uh, what capabilities does HMCS Edmonton bring to this deployment or, or you know, this, this operation off Caribbean? Um, you know, how well suited is the ship to the role? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, the, uh, if you look at the, the NATO designation on my head, it says MM for Mindhunter. Right. Um, but, uh, but these ships are so much more. They were designed with, um, uh, with uh, switchable payloads. Um, so we're able to bring on, uh, you know, space for extra accommodations for our, uh, our U.S. Coast Guard partners. Uh, we're able to bring on uh, a workshop that they can uh, store gear in. Um, but uh, just being a warship, having that, uh, you know, that high-level communication capability, um, having, uh, you know, some of the best sailors in the world, uh, operating out there on the high seas, um, you know, we, we have we have the ability to present lots of options um, to assist and support this operation. And, and these ships have been incredibly successful. Um, you know, the, these ships have, have contributed to the seizure, seizure of uh, of dozens of uh, uh, of tons of, uh, of illicit narcotics over the past um, number of years since we've been doing this. Awesome. Um, in terms of. Uh, you being down, you're going to be gone for approximately three months? Again? About that, yeah. About three months. So, um, are there any ports of call that you're looking forward to, and you and your crew? Uh, yeah, we do have to go into ports uh, from time to time. Um, you know, we need to refuel, get provisions, um, uh, you know, just to keep the ship sustained. So, uh, so there will be a number of ports that we're, uh, we'll be visiting, and uh, the crew's certainly looking forward to, uh, to be able to take a break every so often as well. Any one in particular that you're looking forward to, uh, Frank? Oh, our first stop is uh, is San Diego, which is always great to be hosted by our uh, our U.S. partners, uh, and then after that, uh, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Awesome. And uh, now you're expected to come back. Are you going to participate in any other kind of joint uh, coalition or, or or training evolutions on the way back there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So so every time you send a warship, uh, you know, off over the horizon, there's always demand to do so many important jobs, and there never seems to be enough ships to do all of them. Um, so yeah, we'll be really privileged um, to participate in uh, NAMSI, uh, North American uh, uh, Maritime Security Initiative, uh, and that's with uh, uh, our hosts are Mexico for uh, for this iteration. So we'll be looking forward to 
uh, to linking up with them, doing a little bit of work in interoperability again, um, you know, working on communications, on procedures, on uh, uh, and making sure that uh, that we can cooperate in the maritime realm to contribute to the, the collective security on the high seas. Awesome. And last question I've got for you is: you mentioned that there's a modular capability for these ships. Uh, you spoke about the, uh, the accommodations that for the law enforcement detachment. Um, I know that these ships are also wonderful platforms for automated systems. Uh, might you guys be deploying with anything for this deployment? Uh, uh, so for this uh, this deployment, um, we uh, we didn't opt for an unmanned system on this one, though uh, because of the modular nature, um, you never know. Uh, so so we could uh, if we if we needed to, if the uh, uh, if the situation demanded, we could embark an unmanned system, uh, sorry, a, a, an autonomous system at any point um, if we uh, if we felt it necessary. So that's the beauty of the flexibility of these ships is that. Uh, you know, even uh, we can re-roll, uh, retask um, at pretty much a moment's notice uh, if we have to. Awesome, awesome. Well, C uh, Lieutenant Commander, thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. Uh, thank you. Yeah, good luck on your cruise. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Diggler, down the carry-on! <laughs> 